Hey everyone, what is going on? So this is the start of a new tutorial series where we are going to code a Pokemon clone in Python. Should be fun. I am going to be using PyCharm because uh, it's pretty cool. So I'm just going to do create new project and I already have a folder on my C drive. That, that's where I'm gonna put it. So we're gonna hit create there. And this is gonna do its setup. So in this tutorial, I am not going through kind of the uh, setup of Python and Pygame, which we're gonna be using extensively and, and all that. So that might be in a future video, but this uh, series will just be the coding. So hopefully you're already familiar somewhat with Python. Uh, now you also don't have to be using PyCharm for this. Um, you can just use a normal text editor with Python uh, it's entirely up to you. I'm going to be using PyCharm. Okay, so it's uh, it's added all its bloated files in there and stuff. So now we are good to go. I'm going to right click on here and do new Python file. I'm going to call this one main.py. This will just be our startup file. So hit OK. The first thing we need to do is import pygame because we're using it a lot. Now I think I already have Pygame installed. If you don't have Pygame installed, it should be giving you a warning now and uh, it should uh, give you the option to install it uh, if you don't have it. Okay, so then we can do pygame.init to start it up. We need a screen, so we're gonna do screen equals pygame.display dot set underscore mode then we put in the dimensions so we'll just start with 600 by 400 and then we're gonna do pi game dot display dot set underscore caption and we'll just say pokemon clone and then we are going to do screen dot fill I think it is screen dot fill and we're going to say config dot black so we'll go black and then we're going to do screen sorry we're going to do pi game dot display pi game dot display dot flip which I think kind of just tells it to redraw Okay, so we're gonna render this and it's going to, or we're gonna run it and it will give us an error. So if we hit run in that menu, it should give us the option to run main. We can select main and it will run it. And okay, perfect. So it's saying no module named pi game. Perfect, just what I wanted. So we should be able to go up here, hit more. Mm -mm -mm. There we go, sorry. So uh, hit Alt Enter and it will give you this option and you can select Install Package Pi Game. There we go, okay. So it ran, it set the caption and then it did the screen dot fill and it's saying config is not defined. And that's because we haven't defined it. So we're gonna create a file that kind of stores global variables and we're just going to call it config. So config.py is a new file we're going to add and then here we're just going to say black equals and so this is going to be a color code so 256 comma 250 sorry that's white 0 comma 0 comma 0. Let's do white while we're at it. Is it 256 or 255? Let's be safe and do 255. I think it's 256, but that's safe. Okay, so we've created this config file. It has colors defined. Let's just add a comment there. Colors. Very helpful comment. Okay, so after importing Pygame, now we're going to do uh, from config import star. I think we want that. Nope, that's not what we want. We want import config. Is that what we want? 
Yeah, it's too bad. Import config. Okay, I think that works. My pythons, well, I would say it's rusty, but it was never, never good in the first place. So I'm learning just like you. Okay, so it ran, uh, no errors, and then it just exited. So cool, we have our game, but it's not doing anything. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in a while loop. We're gonna say while true. And then this is gonna be our game loop. So we run it now and it's just never gonna exit. All right, so we can stop it here. Okay, so now we're gonna add another file, another two files. First one is gonna be called game.py. And now I need to define a class and I forget how to define a class in Python. Okay, so now we're gonna define a class called game. And we have to give it its def init. That's underscore init self. And um, I guess let's pass it a screen. Might as well. So we'll do self dot screen equals screen. Now we're gonna get another class and we're gonna call it uh, setup. Why not? Say print do setup. Next we're gonna do def update. We're gonna do print quote update. All right, so now in here, what we're going to do is we're gonna create a game before the loops. We're gonna say game equals game, and we need to pass it the screen. Then what we want to do is, of course, we don't know what the game is, Python. So that's why the red squiggly is there. So we're going to do import, or sorry, we're going to do from game, import game. So that imports this class, which is game, from that file. It knows where that file is because it's in the same directory. And then here, so first thing we, well, we don't even need that. So what we'll do is we'll do game dot update. I'm trying to think where we want the while loop. Do we want the while loop in the main file or in the game file? But right now we'll do it here. So um, that's our first file. Let's just make sure that's still running. We can hit run here, it will run main, and uh, we can see it's updating. Still can't stop it, but that's fine. Okay, now we're gonna do new Python file, and we're gonna call it player. It's gonna be the user controlled player. Player.py, hit okay there. So we need to do the same thing, it needs to be class, player, def, underscore, init, self, um, I don't really know what to put in here. Print quote player created. Why not? Okay, so this player is going to also have an update method. And we'll also just do player updated here. So that should be fine. 
Then what we're also going to do is we're going to do a render method. So def render self, and it's also going to take in a screen, which is going to be that Pi game screen that we're going to pass in. We're going to do screen dot. Okay, so we're also going to do a render thing here, but what we need to we need. Uh, reference to pi game as well. So we're going to do import pi game. And then in our render, we're going to do pi game dot draw dot rect. And it's going to draw it on the screen. And then uh, let's see. The color we're going to do is white. So remember we did the uh, the white color in the config file. So we're going to do config.white, which means we also need to import config. And then we need to render the rectangle. So this is going to be the, uh, this is going to be four points. So first point is the position. So let's just start at 10 for now, 10, and uh, then height. So we'll also do 10 and width 10. I think that's what we want. Okay, I'm a little unsure on my draw rect, so I'm just gonna look up the documentation. So there's this draw method, pygame.drawRect. And uh, what are the parameters here? Surface, color, rectangle, width. Oh, that must be the width of the, uh, the actual rectangle. So whatever, we'll just do two. Okay, so. Now in our game, in our setup, what we're gonna do, uh, so sorry, in our initialization, what we're gonna do is say self.objects equals an empty array. Now in setup, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say um, player equals player, the new class that we just created, and then we're gonna do self.objects, not object, objects dot append so we're going to just append to the array and we're going to append player so we don't know what player is we need to import that so from player import player and then in our update what we're going to do is we're going to loop through all our objects so for object in self dot oop, objects to object dot render. So the assumption here is that any objects that we put in here will have a render class. I'm hoping that there's a way we can kind of uh, make sure of that, but right now we're just uh, assuming the coder is going to do a good job. Okay, so let's see if that is getting our player to render. And I don't see it. So we're going to stop. So let's see, config.white, that's fine, game.update, object.render. So we've appended the objects, so why isn't it drawing? What's going on? 10, 10, 10, 10, that should be fine, 4, that's the screen, oh because we're not actually passing the screen in, are we? So that should kind of be, uh... oh. Yeah, so we're not passing the screen in. So we need to pass self.screen to this render. Let's see if that does anything better. I don't know why that wouldn't have errored out though, to be honest. Yeah, something's off. So something's off, so what we can do is we can um, put a breakpoint in here by clicking there and hit our debug button. So now when we hit that, it's going to pause and we can see what's going on. Okay, so we've hit our breakpoint. So first thing to do is, uh, this is the game, so the self objects, what's in there? So nothing's in there. So why is nothing in self.objects? We've appended, have we? Did we forget to call setup? Okay, so we forgot to call setup. So that's what's pretty awesome about PyCharm is the debugging ability. So we forgot to call game.setup. So if we call that now, game.setup, 
we hit run, there's our square. Okay. So now let's also handle events. So we'll do that in our game um, update. And we're just gonna do self.handle underscore events. I'm not really sure if this is the best place for handling events. Maybe it's in main. What do you guys think? All right, so we're gonna define our class here. Def handle underscore events. Now, if we didn't want to write this out, I think the other thing we could do is we come over here, put our cursor on there, hit Alt Enter, and it gives us the option to add method handle events to class game. So that's uh, that's pretty cool as well. Okay, so we're going to need Pi Game in here as well, so we can get events. So to get events from Pygame, what we do is for event in Pygame dot event dot get. So that's going to get all the events. Now let's take a look at what these events might actually be. So we can come up to this documentation again. We can go to the event. And we see this pi game event dot get gets event from the queue. And let's see, I want the actual oh here, okay. I think this is what we want. These are the events. Okay. So we're gonna listen for this quit event. So what we can do is We're gonna do pi game, uh, sorry, we're gonna do an if event dot type equals pi game dot, oh, and there's all our events there, so dot quit. So that means that the user's trying to quit. If they do that, we're going to exit our program by doing, sorry, we're not gonna exit our program. What we're gonna do, we're gonna add a um, state. So uh, let's see, we want, we want some enums, we want an enum. So I forget how to do an enum in Python, I'm gonna look that up. Not enumerate, enum. So there's this uh, support for enums. Uh, I guess it's new in 3.4 Python. Um, cool, so this is what we need. So. Um, that means it's gonna be a new file in our game. So new Python file. We're gonna do call it game state.py. Hit okay. So we're gonna copy that from enum, import enum, and then something like class game state enum. Is that what I saw? Enum. Then we're going to add, um, I, don't, I don't know, running equals one, ended equals two. These can change later, but I guess we'll just do none. Why not? I don't know what a none state is, but okay. So we're going to import that now. So from game state import game state. Now on initialization of our game, we're gonna do self dot, sure why not, game state equals game state dot none on initialization. And then on after setup, we're gonna do self dot game state equals game state dot running. All right, I think that's cool. So then in our while loop, which is in our main, I think we still have that in our main. Hmm. 
Okay, in our uh, game loop, so we're going to switch this to while game dot game state equals game state dot running. Now we don't know what this is. We need to import it so from game state import game state. Then what we do is when we get the quit event, we just update our game state. So self dot game state equals game state dot ended. And that should end our while loop. So let's see if that uh, works. Save it and run. So it's running. Now if we hit this, it should send the pi game quit event and quit our game. And it does it. We don't have any frame rate going on. So let's add a frame rate. We can do that by saying clock equals pi game dot time dot clock. And then we'll do a clock dot tick and set our frame rate. So I guess for now I'll just do, I don't know, what's a good frame rate, 50? And that adds frame rate to our game. So I think if we put this really slow, Remember before when we were running up, when we were running in the game, that update was running out very quickly. Now that that's at one, I'm curious as to how quickly those will scroll by. Okay, so we can see, look, it's uh, going very slowly because we have a slow frame rate. So we'll quit. And if we add that up to 50, it's gonna be much quicker. And we can see it's much quicker. Okay, last thing in this video I want to do is to get our um, player moving. So, what we want is we want an else if event dot type equals pi game dot key down, I guess. So, we're now trying to listen for the key down event. Now we want to listen for what the, um, what key was pressed, or yeah, what key was pressed. So we'll do if event dot key equals pi game dot k to signify the key underscore escape. So that's if the escape key was pressed we will also end the game. Let's see if that works. Here it is, I'm gonna hit the escape key and it's gonna exit our game. Okay, so last thing we want in this tutorial is to get our player moving around. So that means we need a position. So in our constructor, we're going to add in two parameters. We're going to add in an X position and a Y position. Okay, then we're going to assign those. So we're going to say self dot position equals make it an array of two positions, X underscore position and Y underscore position. Then when we draw our player, Instead of at 10, 10, it's going to be at self dot position zero and self dot position one. But it can't just be there. It also needs to be at the, um, oops, basically there's a scale here, right? So since our player is 10 pixels wide and 10 pixels high, when he moves one to the left, if we still draw him at, we draw him at zero one, he's going to uh, not have moved one whole position. So we want to scale. So let's, uh, let's do in our config, we can set scale equals 10. Then in our player, 
instead of hard coding this 10, we'll do config.scale. So then if we ever want to change it, we can change it everywhere. And here it's going to be self.position times config.scale and times config.scale. I think that's right. Is that right? Let's say it's right. I don't know. Um, okay, so now when we create our player, we need to pass that position in. So that's uh, in our game setup. So we'll just pass, we'll start him at 1, 1. Then, and when we're handling our uh, handle key events, We're going to say else if event dot key equals pi game dot k underscore. Uh, let's use a WASD to move around. So we'll do k underscore. There. Yeah, I think it's just W. Yeah, there we go. So that's for up. And so that's going to be um, self.player. So we also want to assign the player as a variable to our game, not just in the objects. So we'll do self.player equals player. Now we can manipulate that directly. We'll do self.player update underscore position. And we'll do basically x, y for our positions. So up is going to be zero change along the x axis and minus one along the y. So we'll just copy that, paste it three other times. Three. So this will be down. So it's positive y, um, positive y now, and that's going to be the s key. This is going to be the A key, and that's going to be 0 along the Y, negative 1 along the X. It's going to be positive 1 and 0, and that is the D key. Okay, now we need to write this method player to update position. So def update position. Um, in Python, whenever you create a method in a class, you have to pass it itself. That's why all the self is in all these classes. So there's two parameters here. There is the x change and the change and the y change. So then we'll just do self dot position zero plus equals the x change I think that's what we want. And the self dot position one plus equal the y change. Okay, let's see if any of that's actually working. So, if snake. So I'm pressing the S and D key here, and we can see our player is moving, but we're not clearing out the previous drawn position. So we missed that in one of our loops. So let's see, that should be in in our update, I think. Yeah, so in our update, what we're basically gonna do is clear out the screen. So this is our game loop. So we do uh, self.screen.fill and do config.black. Now it looks like we haven't imported config in the game file. So we just need to add that in up here. Import config. So let's run that. And now we can see we fixed that problem. Okay, so we have a player moving around. I can't hold and click yet. I'm sure we'll get that later. But we have a player that's moving around 
So I'll just leave it there for this tutorial um, and hope you guys enjoyed that. All right, and guys, just a quick note is I've added all this code to my GitHub. Um, I've created a repository for this tutorial series and I'll just add the code to a new folder after each video. So this is all that code is in there. Um, I've excluded the PyCharm stuff, but the code should run.